Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be the narcissist becomes smaller as you heal. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So the healing path, the healing path is not linear. It takes time, it takes a lot of time. But in your time, you will heal if you focus on yourself and you absolutely understand that the narcissist did not have your best interest at heart when you were in that relationship. We now understand that there are people on the planet and the narcissist is certainly at the top of that list who do not have our best interest at heart. But not only that, but that are trying to sabotage parts of our lives, trying to drive wedges between us and any relationship that matters, trying to see that if they could put a stop to your progress in life, meaning the relationships you were building, the relationships that you are building, the friends that you have, the hobbies, the network, the support system, your romantic interests, etc. The narcissist is a hollow and shallow, empty person. They are envious and they are jealous and they do want what you have and they certainly wanted what you had, which again, included your time, money, energy, effort, resources, love, network, social status, etc. They wanted everything that made you you. And truth be told, they did capture this. They, they captured you for a period of time and they had you working for them as the unpaid helper or the walking apology or the person who was putting a roof over their head, etc. And they had you where they wanted you, placed in that narcissistic fog for a long period of time, but then you broke free because that's why you're here in the community and you had a light bulb moment. Maybe it was yesterday, maybe it was half a year ago, maybe it was 20 years ago, but eventually something clicked in your mind and you realized that that relationship was not serving you. Let's take the parent for a moment. Maybe one of your parents is a toxic person. Well, what you did is your whole upbringing, your whole childhood, you thought that they perhaps just had some challenges or a tough day at work or maybe they didn't get the promotion they were looking for or whatever, but you, you would be doing things for them even though they were not there for you. Example, when you were a kid, if you, one of your parents was a narcissist or is, perhaps they didn't attend your events, ceremonies, graduations, sporting events, school projects, etc. If they weren't there, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're a narcissist. What it means is just look back in your life and review which of your two parents was there for you. Many times it is a person who actually cares about you and is putting aside their life to support you. Flip it, if it's the narcissist, many times they will claim that they got a flat tire, oh, they forgot the event, they have to stay late at work, they have to do A, B, and C, because they're telling you right then and there, or maybe they told you after the event happened, this again, this is when you were a child, maybe it's even right now, they're telling you that what's it, what is important to you certainly isn't important to them, and that is how the narcissist thinks. They think about one person, only one person, and it is themselves. The narcissist does not care about anybody else. They don't look at people as beautiful, bright, shining lights as I look at you. They don't look at you as a beautiful, empathetic human being. They look at you as an opportunity. And in each and every person, the narcissist wants to take any opportunity they can to better their life and their circumstances and leaving people in a wake of destruction. That is why the narcissist goes on from person to person, town to town, city to city, blowing up every relationship they encounter because the narcissist needs people. They need to regulate themselves. And when you're in the narcissistic fog and you're being devalued each and every day, maybe for weeks or maybe even months, years, you don't know what's going on because first of all, you weren't taught narcissism in school. Second of all, no one came knocking on your door and told you what you were up against. Third of all, the narcissist was most likely isolating you from any support system that you had. Maybe your immediate family, maybe your friends, colleagues, neighbors, coworkers. And another thing is you lost your identity. You became a shell of yourself. What you were doing is you were working for the narcissist, putting them higher up on the pedestal to the detriment of yourself. A couple examples there. When you're in the relationship, many times people will have no credit card debt. And then lo and behold, years later, because they're now living with the narcissist, they're supporting the narcissist in their lifestyle, they run up a large amount of credit card debt. That is an indication of what? Of financial abuse, but also of you doing whatever, everything you could to support that relationship financially. That's just one microcosm. And again, if you're with a person and you've racked up credit card bills, it doesn't mean they're a narcissist. I'm just sharing with you. With the narcissist, you get financial abuse, emotional abuse, spiritual abuse, mental abuse, sometimes physical abuse. It's left, right, and center in these relationships and the narcissist knows it. So why I'm sharing all this information is when you were in the relationship, you didn't know what you were up against and then something happened. Either you were discarded or you ended it yourself or perhaps you're consuming this video wherever you are and you have an exit plan or you are creating one. Perhaps it is when your child turns 18. 
and you know that you can leave then or maybe there's a certain event that's gonna take place or something in the future and you're planning to remove yourself from the relationship then. Any of those th all th uh, three examples pertain to you because you made it this far in the video, number one, but number two is the narcissist wants you trapped and stuck. They don't want you advancing. The narcissist wants you believing in the mask. The narcissist wants to have the ability to bully you, to verbally abuse you, and to just cast you and your emotions and feelings and anything that is important to you to the side because they are watching your life implode or they're watching your life stay set stagnant, which means you're not growing. And perhaps you are trapped, perhaps you are right now in the narcissistic relationship and you're trying to figure out if there is an exit plan or if you can escape and get out. I will tell you right now, there's always a way out of it. You just have to have a plan. You have to follow with it, stick with it. Don't sway and understand that each and every day, circumstances or variables of your exit plan may shift, they may change. But again, that's for a different video. Why I'm saying all these things is because the narcissist had you manipulated. They had you believing in them. They had you believing that you couldn't make it without them. They had you believing that they were better off at handling your finances or your job or career or anything than that you could. Why I say that is because the narcissist doesn't want people to succeed. And you at one point were at the top of that list or maybe you still are. But when you do get it discarded or you end it yourself, what happens is you enter a place called the healing path. And what that is, and actually you could still be the healing path. You can still be there if you're developing an exit plan. It's just that you don't have as much energy or time. But when you're out of the relationship, then you can really focus on yourself. You're now on the healing path. You've probably have already taken the first step. Many of you have already reached the pinnacle of indifference, the mountaintop of indifference when you have healed and you no longer care about the narcissist or people from that period of time because the narcissist has become small. They've become teeny weeny. They're not even a piece of dirt below your shoe. That's how small they are. But to get there, to get to that pinnacle, what you need to do is you'll have to slow your life down. You'll have to learn to go no contact, block these people, delete them, remove all flying monkeys and people associated with them. If you can't do that, understand that gray rock is the path. Just become dull and boring. Now, it's not as simple as that. These are the primary steps once you're out of the relationship. Some other steps are you're gonna have to really let your emotions out. If you wanna cry, cry. If you go through the angry stage, maybe experience that. Maybe punch a couple pillows or something, but don't hurt yourself. And certainly don't hurt anybody else. But when you let all the emotions out and you practice radical acceptance and you really do the deep dive and perhaps you see a, a therapist and you journal and you watch videos and you read and you meditate and you're really understanding that that relationship was something that almost took you down for the count, but it didn't. You're still here, you are healing and it is not a marathon. Sorry, it is not a sprint, this is a marathon. It will take time for you to get to where you want to be, but know that each and every day you will get stronger. And yes, you will have hurdles to overcome. Yes, you will have setbacks, but if you have your steps, if you're, if you're already on the healing path, you know that it's not linear. The healing path is certainly not linear. Linear. It takes time, it takes a lot of time, but in your time you will heal. Now I repeat these very important phrases and messages that I've coined over the years because they work and because you need to hear them over and over and over again until something clicks. Maybe today's the day when you finally said, you know what, Andrew's right, I need to leave this relationship. I shouldn't be in this, it's not serving me. My health has taken a hit, my finances are taking a hit, I'm being devalued more and more, I don't see an end in sight. And maybe today is the day you grab the bull by the horns and you make an exit plan or maybe you leave, I can't tell you. What I can tell you is when you're on the healing path, the narcissist sincerely becomes smaller and smaller. Now it doesn't happen overnight because you'll still have to do a couple very important things, which one is break the trauma bond because the narcissist placed you in that narcissistic fog. They wanted you to be a puppet and a pawn and a sounding board and they knew what they did because they had done it previously to other people. And I can assure you right now, they're either doing it to other people or they're beginning to start to groom other people for your place, for where you were. Now that's how the cycle goes around and around and the cycle always will go around. The thing is the cycle needs to go around without you. You need to pull yourself out of that cycle or if you were discarded, you were removed from the cycle and that is actually a very good thing. Not being discarded, but not being in the present of the narcissist because this is where you slow your life down. This is where your energy begins to return. This is where your health begins to return. This is where your physical features begin to return. This is where your clarity returns. This is when your finances begin to be added up, like accumulated, because you no longer have a person, perhaps even living under the same roof as you telling you negativity, not good things. You now have understood that that person 
can't change. They won't introspect. They are a feeble and weak-minded person. And what they did is they used their words as weapons against you. And you were so beaten down because perhaps that was a romantic relationship, or maybe it was your mom or dad, and you believed that they had your best interest at heart. When you give everything to a relationship, and you give all of your heart and your energy and everything to somebody believing that they have your best interest at heart, and it turns out that they don't, that is a very difficult pill to swallow. Believe me when I tell you, it does not feel good, but you have to unwind that. And then again, as I mentioned, practicing radical acceptance and realizing that that relationship wasn't what you wanted it to be, it was what it was. And the narcissist is not only an energy vampire, but they're a toxic person who wants to take and take and take. And when they're done, what do they want to do? That's right, they wanna take more. They wanna take anything they possibly can from people. Now, having said all these things, how the narcissist becomes smaller, it's when you're on the healing path, when you no longer are looking at their social media, you are no longer peeking at their social media, you have blocked them, you understood that there will be casualties of the relationship that maybe are the immediate family members of the narcissist or acquaintances you had in common or maybe people in the neighborhood or people in your work, who knows. But the, the littered broken relationships, post-narcissistic relationship, which do not exclude the narcissist, they're scattered everywhere. There will be casualties, I can assure you, many casualties, including perhaps parental alienation, rebuilding your finances, slowing your life down and understanding that that relationship was something you had to go through no matter what you think. There was no other way. And you need to get the lifelong learning lessons from that relationship. And you need, you need to apply them to present day. We don't want to be stuck in the past. We don't want to be thinking about what we could have done, what we should have done. Did the narcissist change? Do they really love me? And by the way, they do not love you or anybody. And you don't want to be predicting the future. Is the narcissist here? Are they there? What's gonna happen about this? What happens if I do that, if I don't? When you're predicting the future or you're stuck in the past, you're not doing something called living in the present moment. When you're living in the present moment, which is something the narcissist did not want you to do, you are not in the abundant flow state. You are not where your energy naturally vibrates. You are not where you are supposed to be. So if you are stuck in the past, please process anything from the past, which perhaps could include childhood wounds. If you're thinking about the future, the what ifs of the future, Please play this part of the video a few times. Nobody is guaranteed to be here tomorrow. Not one of us. Maybe the planet isn't here tomorrow, and I hope to God it is, and I hope you are all here, and I certainly hope I'm here, but no one's guaranteed to be here. So that's why you need to really wrap your head around that the narcissist did what they did, and when they, what they did what they did, when they did what they did, they lost the most important thing they will ever lose in their life, which is you, and you need to let that relationship slither away, become smaller and smaller because the narcissist can't change, but you can change because you're healing, you're learning, you're growing, you're teaching, you're becoming awakened and aware, educated and empowered and you understand that you are the priority, that you come first, second and third. Now when I say that, and I've instilled that for a couple of years now, that is letting you know that no longer do you put anybody above you. You don't put anyone on a pedestal, you don't become, you don't put somebody ahead of you doing anything. Using the oxygen mask example, flying at 35,000 feet, when that oxygen mask drops down from above, you have to put your mask on first, then you can help your neighbor. That's what you need to do post-narcissistic relationship. You have to heal, you have to really insulate yourself and protect yourself and share information with those people that are loved and trusted and who support you and don't burn out other people who can't wrap their head around that you just exited a narcissistic relationship. If people haven't gone through the cycle, they can't fathom it. They will just tell you this, it's not such a big deal, it's been a half a year, it's been a year, move on. Don't, what's the big deal? There are so many people out there, just start dating, do what you wanna do. It's not that easy, it's not even close to that easy. So those people, they don't get it. And my hope is they never get it because that means they didn't go through a narcissistic relationship. But why I'm sharing all these things is the narcissist does become smaller and smaller. They become a little blip on the radar when, in the car when you're looking in your rear view mirror. The further you drive and move forward, the smaller and smaller that dot gets. And there will be times when you're gonna be looking in that rear view mirror and the dot's gonna be huge. It's gonna fill up the whole mirror. And you're like, I can't even see anything back there. I can't see that light in the backness, in the back of the, of the rear view mirror. That's all I see is pitch blackness. Well, that's because you just started the journey on the healing path. And the further you get away from the narcissist, using this car analogy, the more light at the back of the mirror, the back, the, the further you get away from them, that light illuminates more and more and more and the sun will rise and eventually that darkness that was in the mirror, it becomes a speck and it fades away and then all you see is the beautiful, abundant pinnacle of indifference and you see the sun rising up above that mountaintop. 
That analogy is a absolutely perfect analogy because it's real. The thing is, when you're in the relationship with the narcissist, they don't want you believing in yourself. They don't want you being yourself. They use people, abuse them, manipulate them, and spit them out. That's what they do. And the cycle will always continue. It just needs to continue without you. And my hope is that one day the cycle does not continue at all any longer. However, we're not there. So what you need to do is really understand, as you heal, the narcissist becomes smaller. That's why many times people will say to me during one-on-one -on -one sessions that they will, the narcissist will try to hoover them and they will just look at it and they will shrug their shoulders and they will delete or throw it in the bin or not respond to it or whatever, whatever they do because they now understand it's all smoke and mirrors. The narcissist is nothing but a tiny little person with a remote control controlling people's lives, verbally abusing them into submission, financially abusing them into paying their way through life, mentally mentally abusing them having them think that they have the ones they're the ones that have the problems when in fact it's the narcissist when you really see behind the curtain like in, in the movie the famous movie the wizard of oz that i believe came out in 1933 if i'm not mistaken that's my favorite number by the way 33 i'm not sure but whatever year it came out that you at the end of that movie you see how frail and fragile the wizard of oz is he's a tiny little person behind a curtain but he's pulling all of the levers and the controls of all the characters in that movie. That's the narcissist in a nutshell. They're nothing, they're absolutely nothing, but they have you believing that they are something and they have you believing that you need them and that you can't live without them. That's why the narcissist hoovers at times, but this video isn't about the hoover. It's to let you know, don't accept the hoover. And it's also to let you know, the further you get away from the narcissist, the smaller they become. The smaller they become, the less likely they are to try to pop back into your life. And the less likely that is, is it equals the, the more abundant and the, and the more beauty and the possibilities, the, the doors of opportunities that will open up for you. You see, this life is meant to be lived. It's meant to be experienced by you and to have you share whatever you want with anybody you want to, which does not include the narcissist. We understand now these people, not only are they everywhere, but they don't have our best interest at heart. They don't deserve to see you, to hear you, to, to look at your social, they deserve nothing and they will slither away one day and they will become so small they won't even be a blip on the radar and you'll look back in that rear view mirror and it will be nothing but abundance. It will be beauty, it will be sunshine, it will be the pinnacle of indifference. It will be all the hopes, the dreams, the aspirations and any goals you ever wanted to accomplish because when you come through the cycle and you rise through the ashes like a phoenix, I'm talking about the narcissistic abusive cycle, you are changed forever. You see the world through a brand new set of eyes that most people can't even fathom they can't wrap their head around it, but you don't explain it, you don't defend, you do nothing but live your best life. And many times you watch people and you can observe them, but you don't long, you no longer try to save everybody. You see, when you enter that narcissistic relationship, m most likely you are either vulnerable, and I'm sure you were, or two, maybe you try to be the white knight in shining armor and help them out. And they saw that and they looked at that as the opportunity, as the golden ticket to get them where they wanted to be until they took all of your resources and then they had the new supply lined up, perhaps discarded you, and they went on. That is what they do. And notice something. You are the beautiful, bright, shining light. You are the positive energy force. You are the one that the narcissist sought out and they tried to take you down for the count, but they failed and they failed miserably like they always do. So understand you are the priority. You come first, second, and third. Everyone, I hope you liked the video. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew, namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning. No matter where you are on the planet, you are not alone. Remember that you are not alone. And I wanna share this with you because I'm not sure if I finished it early in the video. I mentioned so many of the, of the tagline, uh, the lines that I've created, the quotes I've created over the years to reinforce with you. They do work, they're real. I'm living proof. And that's why sometimes you may say, well, why are you repeating yourself so much, Andrew? Because every single video you consume, there is, there are many nuggets of wisdom. And today, perhaps, is the day that you heard one of those quotes that I continue to use and I've used it for over three years that maybe today's the day it clicks with you and maybe today's the day you get a light bulb moment and you're like, oh my gosh, I see it now. I didn't get it before, but now I see what Andrew's talking about. That is why I repeat myself and I will do the same thing over and over and over again until everybody is across the bridge to my side, to the pinnacle, to the mountaintop of indifference. So that's why I do it. Love you all, God bless you, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a great evening, I love you guys, bye.